as some of my later videos may show, I've got a bit of an interest in alternative energy sources. And I don't just mean practical ones like solar. I also mean the sillier ones. Even the ones that are completely impractical. That's why I played around with that wind turbine which I knew wouldn't work very well. Well, I have now developed this further. It has led to me purchasing an alternator, which I have been studying. The way these are uh, voltage regulator modules, primitive, I can do better than that. And a couple of other things. This is going to be hopefully concluding with a human powered generator involving the great big alternator and a bicycle and improved designs for 3D printable alternators for use with micro wind turbines and I mean sub 10 watt turbines really micro. There are a couple of designs for that that you can get off Thingiverse but the results from them are mixed and I think I might be able to improve them a bit. I also found a teardown for a really nasty a uh, hand crank powered phone charger. Uh, this is some of the cheapest and nastiest little ones I've seen in the teardown. I will provide a link to this, which you should watch now if you want to compare. Go on. Okay, welcome back. Having um, looked at that, I realised maybe a hand crank generator could be practical, just not that one. And when I think hand crank, I think of the old telephone systems. Now they turn the handles make it ring. Now, there was a reason for these hand cracks, which is that uh, the phones were powered by batteries, old dry cells, but to generate the ringing signal requires about 200 volts, at least 100. And that's because you need to get power down the line to ring a bell, and you're not going to get that much power through a couple of kilometres of phone line at that voltage. Now back in the day, there were no little buck converters, little, little boost converters. So if you want to get a high voltage, you have to be creative, which is why the magneto came in. And this is its slightly more modern version. This is the um, ringing magneto from a German military field telephone. And I figured this is going to be really high quality. There's some grease on there. And it is. So I'm going to tear this down and discuss how it works and what I intend to do with it. As this little schematic on the side, yes I do like schematics on devices, shows it contains two coils in series which connect up to the second and fourth pins and it also contains a switch. Now the purpose of the switch, if I turn this you can see that moves in slightly, that's actuating the switch. And it is so that these coils can be disconnected from the circuit when you're making a phone call and only connected up when you're cranking it to make the other end ring. And on the other side here, you see a mysterious symbol that I'm guessing is something German. And the very nice specifications, at least 60 volts, at least 3.6 watts and a resistance of something, RA. I'm going to resume that's coil, one kilo ohm. Actually, that's too high for the coil. I don't know what that is. Well, just to uh, show what it does, turn handle, get power. It's a little bit coming apart at the moment because I've taken some screws out for easier tear down in a minute. But if the screws are in, I assure you this is very solidly built. Now. If I just connect up my scope here, this does tend to fall off very easily. I want to stay in. You can see, this is me turning it slowly, and even slowly, that's a uh, 200 volt peak. There we go, sine ish wave. It's not quite a sine wave. You see, it's got flat tops. And the reason for this, I'm guessing, is because the magnet isn't the perfect line of a point at each end. It's a rectangle-ish sort of shape with um, north and south poles actually round. But basically it's not an ideal geometrical line, which means that you don't get all the um, flux passing through the coil at the same point. 
Look, I imagine it, you get the idea. So I can't describe it very well. If I crank it really fast, I can get over 200 volts peak from this. And yes, it does hurt if you touch the contacts when you're doing that. Of course, you can't crank it that fast when you've actually got a load on it because it puts up a fair bit more resistance to the turning. It gets very hard if it's shorted. I don't know exactly how much power this thing can give. However, if it says 60 volts and I actually get 200 from it open, then I'm guessing that 3.6 watts is very much a lower bound and it's probably good for at least 5, maybe as much as 10. I've not measured it connected to a load yet. Right, let's see inside and why this thing works so much better than the cheap and nasty one. I've removed the screws here and here. I've removed this plate here, which doesn't actually appear to do anything. I think it's just for mounting it to another device. And I've loosened some of the screws on the sides which retain the coils. So, here we go. I have done this before so I know what to expect. There. Top part first and we see the first reason this is better than the cheap and nasty one. These gears. Like the cheap and nasty it has a gear chain which takes the slow rotation of the handle and turns the shaft really fast. But these are precision engineered metal of some kind gears. And they're not even simple straight teeth ones, look. Electal gearing, much smoother. So, better quality engineering, better quality design, and uh, better quality power. There's the contacts where the wires go into the switch. And if I was to press this in, you can see there is the switch mechanism moving. In here we have, as you would expect, a big magnet that spins and some coils. Now, if I remove the big magnet, <sighs> that actually puts up quite a strike. And you can see we have uh, a big magnet that attracts a bit of magnetic crud from my desk. Uh, not much to really say about that except that it's a big, really strong magnet. And that matters. Because you may have seen in your school science books that a motor and a dynamo are pretty much the same thing. But they're not quite. I mean, they're close enough that one can work as the other, but they're not the same. For one thing, a dynamo has a phase offset on its com 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 thingy that um, commutator, was it? That uh, allows for skew field at the rated operating speed. A motor doesn't. But more importantly, most motors, aside from some specialist, very compact, high-speed ones that you find in model aircraft, use simple ferrite magnets because you don't need a really strong field. Whereas this is a really strong neodymium magnet. And that makes a big difference because to make power, you need a really strong field. That's why most large, all large alternators use an electromagnet for their field coil because you can just get a higher field strength than you can from permanent magnets that way. Plus they don't wear out. That clock's sit on the floor. This is simply a magneto, which means it's an alternator with a permanent rotating magnet in the middle. Doesn't need exciting, so much easier to use at the expense of lower maximum power. Next difference, these coils. These are not the kind of thing you would find in a motor. They are designed for the purpose of generating power and this does reflect in their design. You have to remove these side screws and then you can remove the coil. There. This is set up for high voltage so really thin wire. You can't even see the wire on the camera but really it's really thin with lots and lots and lots and lots of turns which is how you're getting 200 volts at the expense of high coil resistance. Now, I think I can rewind these so I can get more current, that is low resistance, but lower voltage. And ideally want the peak to be 
between say 7 and 30 volts because 30 volts is the maximum input voltage for a lot of DC DC converters and it means I can get this down to 30 volts peak I can just feed it into a simple buck converter and get regulated to 5 volts out and I don't know, charge phones or something. If you look at the magnetic design of the coil, again, this is very well done. It has a metal plate here, well, laminate plate layers, which, um, that's laminated with your steady currents, of course, I just realised that, which will direct all of the flux from the magnet through to this side here, through the coil. So none of it gets wasted, and the metal body of the device itself forms a closed magnetic loop. So it uh, loops around like that. There we go. Loops around like that. Which again greatly increases your power output. This is a hand crank generator done properly. So don't be put off by the cheap and horrible stuff of eBay. It works well as you expect for the price. A properly designed device like this can generate usable amounts of power simply by turning a handle. And yeah, 5 to 10 watts, that's useful. It's enough to charge a torch, or to charge a phone, or in this case to make a telephone ring. Right, that was exciting. Now I've got to get this thing back together again. Again. Hope you enjoyed that teardown. If you want these things, I got them on eBay. They are military surplus, so I don't know how long they're going to last. If I can find the link, I shall put that in the description too, if you want one. And hopefully my next video will involve either continuing work on my solar, or my first attempts to hook the big alternator here up to a bicycle. Which is not going to be as easy as you might think. Because these things have a um, electromagnet field coil on the rotor, and it is not normally energized. I've got to figure out which of these pins is the ignition sense, and I also intend to completely redesign the voltage regulator circuit in a way that will make the dyno able to operate at lower RPM without having to rewind anything. So, I think this is uh, definitely a line of research worth going down. And I hope this gets me another viewer or two.